Hey guys, what's going on? It's Joel Tavares here. You're watching Dual Shockers TV on DualShockers.com. Uh, I'm here with a fellow that you're probably familiar with, especially if you've been, if you've been following Starhawk. It's uh, president of Lightbox, uh, Mr. Dylan Jove. Uh, Dylan, it, it's it's a pleasure, pleasure to finally meet you in person. Good to meet you. Um, and uh, now we finally get a chance to see some single player Starhawk. So yeah. please let let us know what we can expect here, because I'm, I'm getting the whole uh, Western vibe. I, I, I don't want to say I see what you did there, but yeah, I, 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 I see what okay. you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the um, the single player we're showing here uh, for the first time at the PlayStation Lounge on uh, Madison Avenue, and um, we're really excited about it. I think a lot of players know Starhawk um, from the multiplayer beta, and we're really happy with our multiplayer. It turned out great. We had great response during the beta. But I think players are going to be pleasantly surprised with our single player. I think a lot of players were just expecting like a dull tutorial or some kind of throwaway um, SP experience, but that's not the case at all. I mean, the story is so tightly woven around Emmett Graves and that kind of, I see what you did there, kind of space western feel, whether it's the music or the themes or all of it, it really came together quite well. And, and the response today has been great. Now, one of the things that, that uh, I kind of wanted to touch base on was that, um, Obviously, this is you know since Warhawk, this is Warhawk was an online-only experience. Mm -hmm. Now you've decided to with Starhawk integrate a single-player game. How much you know? How, was it was it a big challenge? Did you have a lot of fun with it, yeah. or was it a story that you guys wanted to tell? Yes, yes, and yes. Okay. It was um, a big challenge um, because while the single-player game uses the same elements as um, the multiplayer game, um, presenting them to the player in a a, a way that's moved by the narrative and in a way that's clear with objectives and, and really exciting build and battle challenges, um, that was really challenging. It took us a long time to kind of figure that out. Um, we did have a blast with it. We had a lot of great fun with it. How we did the cinematics with a kind of a Western kind of uh, wanted poster kind of style, the transitions between the cinematics and the, the game, um, it was it was great. And, and it, it did take us a quite a long time to, to bring it together. But um, like I said earlier, the response has been great on it so far. Um, take, taking a build and battle into consideration, how do you, like, uh, online, I understand the way it works. And, right. And how you, you earn certain things as you're progressing online during a match. But when you're building a single player campaign, how do you make build and battle not seem like it's making it almost too easy for you as a player? Um, well, of course, we control what um, Emmett has access to in the game. Um, if we gave the player everything right off the bat, it would be A, overwhelming, and B, you wouldn't be able to craft the right experience. Um, so what we do is we use build and battle um, as a way to give the player different tools and say, okay, here's a combat challenge. It's kind of like um, when you're playing Plants vs. Zombies, right? And you've got a few seeds. Um, I'm throwing out Plants vs. Zombie no, reference. That's, that's cool. um, you've got a few seeds and you know that you're going to get like crazy Michael Jackson zombie and you're going to get crazy Buckethead zombie and whatever. Um, so you have to pick your seeds just right. It's the same kind of thing with Starhawk. So um, Cutter, who's the, the kind of Aussie cowboy guy in the dropship in orbit of the planet, he gives you uh, a set palette of things and you have to figure out how you're going to solve that combat challenge with that palette of what you've got. exactly right so each one is kind of like a combat puzzle nice um any anything that that you've gotten back in, uh, any particular feedback that's from the beta that's directly affecting i'm sorry that we're jumping around no, here but around. it's just like there's so much going jump on around. with this game right. so um what, what like what's that yeah, yeah that was yeah, good yeah, that was good. good that was good but when, when you when uh with, with the multiplayer stuff now um you you have a rabid community yes. you know rabid players that came from Star warhawk Jumping into Starhawk, realize it's a different experience, but they're enjoying it. Right. People are enjoying it. How are well, you taking the feedback? A couple, there were a couple changes we made, too. Right. So we got that rabid fan base, which we're so lucky to have. And our fan base spans kids to you know, old people. You know, it's it's a huge gamut. Um, and no, 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 even older than you. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and uh, at any rate, um, yeah, we got a ton of great feedback. And some of that feedback applied not only directly to the beta, uh, bringing back specific things that players really love from Warhawk. We brought some of that stuff back. Yeah. But also, um, it helped craft how we were doing some of our stuff in single player. For example, we, players really wanted to do build and battle, but they often were doing build and battle in stupid places, like crazy big wall of China structures and things that didn't make any value. 
Um, so what we opted to do in single player is give players some hints. So like here's like a little shimmering white hologram of what you could build here because it might have tactical value. Um, we can actually see Sid, he's deciding to play this mission in a way that you're not even supposed to play this mission. Um, <laughs> Because this is actually, you're supposed to build yourself a tank. That's Sid Schumann from PlayStation Blog, but apparently he does whatever he wants well, when he plays something. And honestly, we've been having a lot of people play the game, and they play it differently. And we've seen that play test after play test. We have to make Starhawk the single player experience. See, that's why you need a tank, Sid. <laughs> I, was I know. Um, but you can play it a ton of different ways. You know, so I, I was doing an interview earlier, and one of the guys was like, oh, am I playing it right? And I'm like, you play it how you want to play it. That's like, it's not a traditional shooter where you like run down the hallway, kick down the door, shoot, 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 run down the hallway, kick down the door, shoot, shoot, shoot. Um, although there is a kick down the door scene in here, which is kind of an homage. But you need to put it in there. It's a Western. Yeah, of course. Um, but it's, it's a very open, a very free form uh, gameplay experience. You line up, and we did this in Santa Monica, which was awesome. They did this play test for us where we brought in five people. We did an all day play test for the solo campaign. Um, and we, you know, me, our lead game designer, Josh, creative director, yeah, Lars. sit there behind player. like a double mirror, double no, sided no, mirror. No, of course, we're talking the God of War <laughs> team. So they, no, they're totally pimped out. Like it's a separate room with big TVs and there's like a camera that's like the live feed of the game okay. plus a camera on their face so you can see their reaction. And we would mark down how long they were playing and all of this stuff. And what was great is that every single person played it a very different way. It's like, oh, that guy is turtling and being defensive. And this guy is going crazy balls out offense. Everyone, you get five people, they play the single player campaign differently. Wow, that's, 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 that's pretty it's amazing. Nuts. It's a yeah, testament yeah, of, yeah. of what you've created here. Yeah, um, I'm really happy with it. Oh, well, look at it. Sid's got an AI guy in his, in his tank, which is pretty <laughs> awesome. With, with See, Jack earlier wasn't doing anything, but with, now Jack is rolling with you. Yeah. With uh, just to close things out, um, I know you. We, we mentioned the Western thing. You were joking around, joking around about uh, Butch Cassidy. Yeah. Any influences that, that went into this? Oh yeah. I mean, um, we wanted uh, we wanted our hero, our gameplay, and our theme to be very non-standard in the shooter genre. We feel that the shooter genre is pretty stagnant right now, and we wanted to be very different on as many fronts as we could be to make as big of a standout. Of, and it's a risk, right? Um, so. Our composer, Chris Lennertz, composed our music in Warhawk, but he created some just amazing melodies um, in this game, and I'm super happy with it. We got, um, we recorded it at Skywalker Ranch, um, and it turned out fantastic. You might, might have heard of it. You might have heard of it, right. <laughs> um, we even got some of the same live players that did the um, soundtrack on Red Dead Redemption. Even though ours has a very contemporary kind of sci-fi western feel, there are moments of, you know, there's little bits of electric guitar, little bits of harmonica that are very reminiscent of Western. It helps you capture a feeling, capture Absolutely. emotion. Absolutely. Nice. Well, Dylan, so excited now. Uh, as if I wasn't already, uh, we gave this game of the show at E3 2011, right? That was last 1984. year. 1984. <laughs> we gave, we gave so it a uh, game of the show at E3 last year, and now uh, you're still on target for May, right? Yeah, May 8th in the U.S. It's an international release. Basically, we're following the sun. Uh, we've got um, May 8th is uh, North America and South America. Then I believe it's uh, Europe on May 9th and uh, Japan. Uh, and I believe it's Japan on May 9th. And I think also Korea and China, Korea and Hong Kong on May 10th as well. So all over the all over the planet. You've got it covered. Well, guys, uh, DualShockers TV, DualShockers.com. Starhawk is shaping up to be a monster title. Look out for it in May. And uh, we're out. Thanks.